Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the third lecture series on feedback amplifiers, third module of our electronic circuits. I am Professor Bhaskar, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, SJB Institute of Technology. Before we move on to the today's discussion and different articles, let us try to revise what we learned in the previous class. Okay? In the previous lecture, we got to know the four different basic amplifiers, namely voltage amplifier, current amplifier, trans resistance amplifier, as well as trans conductance amplifier. So based on what kind of basic amplifier I choose, the feedback networks are also decided because every amplifier will have different quantity at the input and output. When I say quantity, it means it's either the voltage or the current quantity, correct? So based on whether we have the voltage or current at input or output, we decide the feedback. Okay. So based on that, we arrived at four different topologies. Number one, series series, series shunt, shunt series, as well as shunt shunt. In the last class, we talked about the voltage series amplifier as well as the voltage shunt amplifier. Voltage series is equivalent to what? Voltage series is equivalent to shunt series amplifier because the voltage indicates the output sampler part and series indicates the input mixing part correct which is current one so similarly voltage shunt is what voltage is the output we take it across which means shunt to the shunt shunt amplifier so we understood in the last class how basically the characteristics are for a shunt series as well as the shunt shunt amplifier so in today's discussion these are the topics that we have got and the learning objectives are, we are going to talk about the series series. We will again derive the expression for the input impedance as well as output impedance. Please bear it in your mind when we are deriving it. We are deriving for a resistance and later on we can change it to the impedance value. We can generalize it to an impedance equation. Similarly, the second one is series shunt. And finally, the practical circuits of different feedback topologies because these are always required. Because when a student wants to learn or if he wants to get to know how basically these topologies are being applied, then the student would love to look at the practical circuit. So this third point or the third learning objective will give us the understanding of how the topologies are being used in the practical circuits. Okay, we shall see those things. So these are the learning objectives. Let us move on to the first uh, series series feedback amplifier, and we know that this is how basically a series series feedback amplifier will look like, where you have the current at the output and the voltage at the input. So we will try to derive the expression for RIF and ROF, likewise ZIF and ZOF. So now let us derive the expression for the input and output resistances or impedances for a transconductance amplifier with a negative feedback or it is also called a CD series feedback amplifier or it is a current series feedback amplifier. So the block diagram is very clear to all of you. As it is a series series or a current series, at the output you will see the current component. At the feedback or at the input, what you see is a voltage value which is fed in series with the source but with out of phase value which is negative 180 degree. Okay? So that is why you will have Vn as Vs minus of Vf. So the voltage that is getting into the amplifier is reducing. Clear? So now what we will do, we will try to derive the expression for the input impedance using this block diagram. Input impedance. Or it is also called the input resistance value because finally we will be talking, you know, finding out the input resistance and later on we will generalize it to the impedance value. Okay. So in the derivation of input impedance what we will do, we will start with the definition of I in. What is I in equal to? Remember input impedance is looking into the network from the input side. This is what is RIF considering the load as well. So if you look at from this point, we will see what is called RIF. This is input impedance without or input resistance without the feedback. So RI is the only resistance what you see. But if you consider even the feedback, we call it as RIF with feedback resistance 1. So I in could be defined as what? I in is V in divided by R. Correct? This further, I will write it for V in. What is V in equal to? 
Vn is nothing but Vs minus Vf. We know this equation divided by Rn. What I can write finally? Vf is what? From this, I know Vf is beta times of I0. So I'll write it as Vs minus beta times of I0 divided by Rn. And what is I0? From the trans versus transconductance amplifier, we know that I0 divided by Vn is equal to A. So I can write I0 as A times of Vn. So I'll get this is Vs into beta or let me write this A beta times of Vn divided by Rn. This is what you get. So now I'll take the Rn to the left hand side. So let me use a different name for it. This would imply In into Rn is equal to Vs minus A beta times of Vn or I can write Vs is equal to what In into Rn plus A beta times of Vn. Now I'll have to slightly tweak this and rewrite this as Vs equal to In into Rn plus A beta times of, for Vn I'll write it as In into Rn again. So what will I get? I can just take out In into Rn outside, In into Rn whole multiplied by 1 plus A beta. So what is Vs divided by In? So I will get Vs divided by In, Vs divided by In is equal to Rn into 1 plus A beta. If Vn divided by Rn is In or if Rn is equal to Vn by In, Vs by Rn, In should be equal to what? Vs by In should be equal to RIF. So this is RIF equal to Rn into 1 plus A. This is the equation that we get. This would further imply ZIF is equal to ZI or ZN multiplied by 1 plus A B, which means that the input impedance of the input resistance increases. Thus, the input impedance increases in case of current series feedback and The conclusion what we can write. Now coming to the output impedance calculation, let us write output impedance. Output impedance. What shall I do? Remember the procedure that we had uh, used to find the output impedance and this procedure is not specific to only this. In general, whenever you want to find the output resistance or the resistance or the impedance in the output side, we normally set the value of V equal to 0 if there is a voltage source at the input or I be open circuited at the input side and then we connect a known voltage source at the output and try to find what is the output resistance. So this is a very normal procedure everywhere we use it and we are using the same procedure here as well. So we so will do one thing. In this case we will set the value of V to sorry Vs to 0 that is the input source. And we'll connect the known source of the output voltage and let's call it as B. So let's write the uh, circuit diagram for it. Okay. So I'll not be showing the input side here. Input in the sense the Vs value is set to 0. So I'll indicate Vs to be 0 here. It is as good as short circuiting it. You'll have a resistance Ri at the input side. And the feedback network would remain as it is. So, this is Vn value plus minus Vf value, this is plus minus. And what do you have at the output side? You have a current source which is A times of Vn, and that value is I0 current. Let's call it as I0 current, and you will have a resistance which is 
R0, which is an internal resistance of the amplifier. And then we are supposed to connect a known voltage source, which is capital V. Okay. And anyways, this feedback part will remain as it is. So, what has happened here? Let us indicate the current coming out of the voltage source is equal to I. Now, what you see is a current source or a current value getting into this R0 resistance. So, let me consider the node here and let us call it as A, node A. Fine. Now, well, what I will do is I will simply apply KCL to it. So, apply KCL at node A. What will you get? Apply KCL at node A. You will have it as I0 plus I minus what is the current that flows through it. Remember, the voltage will remain as V itself because you have connected a voltage in parallel. So, I can write it as V divided by R0 which is equal to 0. So, what can I write further? This would imply I0 plus I is equal to V divided by R0. But we can write for I0. What is that I can write for I0? I can write for I0 as A times of Vn. So, this would imply A times of Vn plus I is equal to V divided by R0. Further, a times of Vn. Now, what is Vn equal to? You can observe this input side. Vn is basically equal to negative of Vf because Vs is all set to 0. Okay. So, I can write this equation as this further implication is negative A Vf plus I is equal to V divided by R0. But I can write for Vf. What is that I can write for Vf from beta? Beta is what? Vf divided by I0. Or this would imply Vf is beta times of I0. So I can write, let me take this V by R0 to the left, left, left side and write the other things to the right hand side. That is minus A times of what is Vf, just now we found it is beta times of I0 plus I. Now if you observe the relationship between I0 and I, what is the relation between I0 and I? I0 and I are one and the same except that I is negative of I0. Correct? So, I can use this concept further here and write this equation as minus A beta times of I plus I or you can write the equation for this as I should be writing this as plus because I0 is plus times of I or I is equal to minus I0. One and same. So, I can write this as B divided by R0 is equal to let me take that i outside to 1 plus a beta. Now, how do we define the output impedance of the output resistance? That is nothing but the resistance looking into the network from this point. This is what is RIF. This gives me what is R0. That is before the feedback. After the feedback, if you look at into the network, what you observe is the feedback resistance at the output. I should be writing this as R0. So finally, what you get is V divided by I is equal to R0 into 1 plus A beta, which is nothing but R over which I can also write it as ZOF equals Z0 into 1 plus A beta. What is the conclusion that we can draw from this? The conclusion is the output impedance increases. Thus, the output impedance the output impedance increases in the series shunt feedback series series feedback amplifier series series Feedback amplifier. So that was about the series series feedback amplifier or it's basically a transconductance amplifier. Now let's move on to the next kind of feedback which is the series shunt feedback amplifier. And you are all familiar with this block of 
this kind of topology. Let's try to derive the expression for the input as well as the output inference. So a current amplifier, which is also called as a it's also called as a current shunt feedback amplifier. What is the input impedance? So to derive the expression for the input impedance, let us take the help of the block diagram or the schematic. So we'll have what at the input side as it is a current shunt. Remember the input mixing is happening and the quantity will be current value. So it will be IS in this case. Let me indicate the resistance as Ri as usual. And let me have the mixing part here. So again, getting in shunt. This is a feedback network. So we have IF here. And this current is let's call it as I n. Let me write it as R n just to maintain the general you know, with the, the similarity. So write it as R n here. And what we see that the output side, remember it is a current shunt feedback. So the output you see again a current source. Let's write it as A times of I n. And you will anyways have a resistance in parallel because you have a current source with output. I should be writing this as R0 and finally the load resistance RL. And as the output side is also having the current quantity, I should be tapping it in this way. It's a series connection again. Okay, so this is how basically the entire block will look like. Now our job is to find the input impedance for it. So let's find the input impedance. So in the process of finding the input impedance, what I'll do, I'll define first of all what is R n for me. What is R n? It's nothing but V n divided by I n. And what is V n? It's the graph which occurs here across the input terminal of the amplifier. You can also indicate this minus. Okay. Let me have a node here as B. And what will be R i f? R i f will be equal to V n divided by I s. The current will be I s now. That's all. Okay. So my job is to find this. So in the process of finding it, what will I do? I'll apply ACL. Apply ACL at node B. And this is what is node B that we have taken. So what is happening? One current is getting in, which is I s. It gets split into two, I f and I n. So I s should be equal to I F plus I N. So when I apply KVL, KCL, I S becomes equal to I F plus I N. What will I further do? What is I N equal to? I N I can write it as from this, I can write I N as, so this implies I S is equal to I N S V N divided by R N plus I F. And what is I F that I can write? If you see the beta factor, IF is what? The current which gets in is I0. The current which is going out is IF. So this is basically IF divided by I0. Or beta is IF is equal to beta times of I0. You can write this way. Further what? I0 now could be written by taking the equation of the gain. What is the equation of the amplifier gain? Amplifier gain A is nothing but I0 divided by Remember this is a current amplifier. So, A is I0 by I n, which would imply I0 is equal to A times of I n. So, I can write this equation as V n divided by R n plus beta times of I0 is nothing but A times of I n. So, what will I have? I will have I s equal to V n divided by R n. Remember my job is to somehow get V n by I s. So idea should be very clear as to what we are doing. I have this I s 
somehow i need, need to eliminate this i in term here somehow i need to eliminate the i in term is there any way that i can eliminate this i in term is there any way that i can write i in i in is what if you observe i in it's nothing but v in divided by r in so i can write this as beta times of or a beta times of i in which is written as v n divided by r in. so i've got v in by r in both the sides on the right hand side so this could be written as v in divided by r in which is common times of 1 plus a beta what is my definition my definition says v in by i s v n by i s is equal to what is that you get we we'll get it as r n divided by 1 plus a beta which is nothing but r n this is the equation what we are interested in similarly you can write what is z i f equal to which is z i into 1 plus a beta or z in into 1 plus a beta what is the conclusion that we are going to draw the conclusion is thus the input impedance the input impedance we should be writing this as z i divided by a 1 plus a beta input impedance reduces in the current amplifier with feedback with negative feedback this is a conclusion what we can get okay so coming to the output impedance as we have discussed the first three topologies we will follow the same procedure we will set the value of the input if it is a voltage to zero or if it is a current to Again, zero, but we have open circuit inlet. If it is a current source, and at the output, we will connect a known voltage source. So, I will make the value of I is equal to zero, which is as good as saying that I am open circuit inlet, and I will connect a known voltage source B at the output. Okay, I will write the circuit diagram. But remember, I won't be indicating I is in this case because we have set it to zero. I is is set to zero. There will be a resistance RI. Or Rn, the resistance Rn. Now there is a feedback coming in the beta network. And this current is IF, this current is IN. Now you can relate IS and IN as beta. And at the output, we will again have a current source which is A times of Vn, A times of IN, and there will be a resistance R0, and finally, we are connecting a known voltage source to the output. You must be wondering, I have connected a DC, but for the understanding purpose, we are doing it, but strictly speaking, we should be connecting the AC because the entire thing is an amplifier which amplifies the AC signal. Okay. So, this is a known voltage source V which provides an amount of current I and we know I is basically equal to negative of I0. This is I0 current. And this current will flow which is nothing but V divided by R0. Okay. I will derive the further equations. So, what are we interested in? We will apply, we will consider the node. Again, I will consider the node here as A. Apply KVL, sorry, apply KCL. Apply KCL at node A. What is that you will get? You will get it as I0 plus I minus V divided by R0 is equal to 0. So, let me take V by R, R0 to the left hand side and plus R to the right hand side, I0 plus I. Now, what do we have to do? What is that I can write? But I0 is what? I0 is equal to A times of I1. 
But what is IN? As IS is set to 0, IN will be equal to minus of IF. So I can write I naught as A times of negative A times of IF. But what is IF? IF is nothing but beta times of I naught, the beta factor. So I can write I naught as minus A beta times of I naught. Okay. A beta times of I naught, which could be written as minus A beta times of I. So what have I got here? I got it as plus a beta times of i because i naught is negative of i. So I'll get this as a beta times of i plus i, which you will write it as v naught divided by r naught is equal to i into 1 plus a beta. Or you can write v by i, which is what I'm interested in, which is r o f, which is r o f, which is equal to r naught into 1 plus this is the equation what we are interested in. It also indicates that the output resistance increases and so is the case with the output impedance. Z0 is ZOF is Z0 into 1 plus AB. Okay. So the conclusion is thus output impedance Increases in case of current amplifier with feedback, with negative feedback. This is the conclusion. Okay. So after finally having you know discussed the four different types of topologies, we shall summarize the effect on the input and output impedance or resistances as far as these four topologies are concerned. So what has happened to RIF? As far as RIF is concerned, what has happened? It's basically RI times of 1 plus A beta. It means that the impedance has increased. What has happened to R0? The output impedance has come down. Okay. What is happening with the voltage shunt? The voltage shunt input impedance is 1 divided by Ri divided by 1 plus A beta. On the other hand, the output impedance is also R0 divided by 1 plus A beta. So, which means that both input and output impedances have come down. What has happened to the current series? Current series, the input impedance increases and so is the case with the output impedance. Both input and output impedance would go up. Finally, with the current shunt, the input impedance has come down, but the output impedance has gone up. Okay. So in this case, we see the increase, we see the increase, this has got reduced, this also has got reduced, this has increased, this also has increased, this has come down, while this has gone up. So this is the final summary of the effect on the input and output impedances as far as the four different topologies are concerned. Okay, finally we are at a point where we are now able to, you know, understand what kind of a feedback topology or what kind of a feedback network is being used in a practical amplifier circuit. So we'll take a few examples and try to get to know how do we identify those topologies or feedback network and what 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 kind of feedback network it is. So with an example we will start and let us say I have an amplifier circuit like this. Now, probably the moment I complete this circuit, all of you must be in a position, I think uh, all of you will be in a position to tell me what kind of circuit it is and what is the name given to it. Okay, so this is a NPN transistor where we are taking the output at the emitter. Probably I think by this time you should be able to tell me what kind of amplifier it is. It is basically a it is basically a emitter follow circuit. Exactly, very good. So this is basically a emitter follow circuit because we are taking the output at the emitter terminal and we know that 
emitter voltage always will follow the base voltage in this case and that is why the name emitter follower is given to you. So let me write down the name given to this circuit. It is basically a emitter follower circuit. Oh. Now the question comes, how do we identify what kind of topology? Is it a voltage series, a voltage shunt, a current series or a current shunt? So the very first thing what we should always do whenever circuit is given and if you are willing to identify the type of feedback, you should identify the feedback element. So let us say identify the identify the feedback element. And who is the feedback element here? Which is going to act as a feedback element? And somebody point it out. Exactly, it is RE resistant. Why would I say that? Remember in feedback, we'll have, we have the concept of sampling as well as mixing. Sampling happens where? At the output. So which is the output terminal right here? It is the emitter terminal. And what do you see as emitter? It is the emitter resistance, correct? So in this case, RE is going to become the feedback element. Okay, what is the next thing? The next thing is to see whether that feedback element is present at the output or not or is one of the node connected to the output terminal or not. So check whether the element is connected to connected to output terminal. Okay. Second thing output terminal and what is your answer to it yes of course this terminal is in fact connected in fact both the terminals are present re is in fact common to both input and output so both these terminals of re you can see that at the output correct so and for sure one of the terminal is connected to the output so answer is yes if this is the case we would say we are basically sampling sampling what the voltage. So one thing is for sure, the sampling part is a voltage. So either there should be a voltage shunt or a voltage series. Now the second part is what needs to be clarified. Whether this is a shunt or a series is what needs to be clarified. Now how is it coming back to the input side? In the sense how the sampling is really happening. Now for that, what we have to again do is, we have to check, we have to check whether both the terminals, both the terminals of the feedback element is present in the input circuit, in the input circuit. Which is the input circuit. This is what is input circuit. The entire thing is what is basically the output circuit part. You can as well include RC when it comes to the small signal model. We include even RC also at the output. It's all together a different story. So right now, what are we interested in? We are interested in checking this condition. So if this condition is satisfied, if this condition is yes, we will say it is series. Okay. It means that the voltage is getting fed back. If this condition fails, then we will say it is shunt, which means that it is current sum, uh, no, mixing value. Okay, But in this case, what do we observe? Looking at the input, do you see both these? Yes, within the circuit, you see both these terminals of the feedback element present at the input side. So the answer is a big yes to it. And we say that mixing is, what is mixing? Mixing is voltage. If the mixing is voltage, what is the word that we use? It's basically a series. So this topology or this amplifier what we have uses voltage series or it's basically a voltage series amplifier. Okay, So it's so simple to identify. The moment you follow these basic rules, so these are kind of thumb, thumb rules for us. So try to identify whether this is getting satisfied or not. So based on that you decide what kind of network it is. But the most important thing is to identify the feedback element. You must be in a position to identify this. Only then we can think of 
doing further things. Okay, let's just point to it all of you. Now we shall move on to the next, uh, you know, example. Uh, I'll try to write the same example but with a small change. Okay, instead of taking the voltage at the emitter, now I shall take it at the collector and let's see what is going to happen with it. Okay, so I have a resistance at the emitter now. This is RE, this is RC. This is again an NPN transistor, emitter terminal is right here. This is collector terminal, we take the output at the collector with reference to the ground. So RE also comes into picture, correct? And what is the next thing? I'll have the input side and say RB is connected as a current limiter. You also use it for biasing. It's very obvious, for this VS plus minus. Now the question comes, what kind of circuit it is? It's anyways a common emitter amplifier. It's a common emitter configuration, correct? The emitter is basically common to both input as well as output. So we have seen this kind of you know amplifier circuit uh, earlier also in your uh, you know, lower semesters or in the beginning of the analog electronics, correct? So question is, what kind of topology is being used? What is the what is the amplifier name? First thing, we have to identify the element. Which is the feedback element in this case? Which is the feedback element? Would you like to say RC is going to become the feedback element? Never. RC can never become the feedback element because the junction is always in the reverse bias condition. But if you observe RE, yes, it has to and it will provide the feedback. So RE is still going to act as a feedback element in this case. Correct? Because whatever effect that happens at RE, is going to reflect back at the base and the change in RE or change through RE if the current is going to change in RE it is because of the change in the collector current. So there is a kind of relation between IC and IE and so is the relation between IB as well as IE. So IE is kind of you know trying to do the business at the input as well as the output side. Correct. So feedback element becomes the RE component. Now the second question is one of the terminal of this feedback element connected to the output or not? What do you say? What is your answer to it? Output is taken right here at the collector. But where is the feedback element connected? It is connected at the emitter terminal. So what is the, what is the rule, thumb rule that we had? I'll go back and tell you what is the thumb rule that we had. Check whether the element is connected to the output terminal or not. And the answer is a big no to it. Correct? And the answer is no. The element is not connected to the output terminal, but instead it is connected to the emitter terminal. But effect is always seen. So if this is a big no, what kind of sampling are we doing then? What kind of sampling is it? It's basically a current sampling. Exactly. It is what is basically a current sampling. So now we have kind of, you know, zero down to either a current series or a current shunt. This has to be either a current series or a shunt. Series or shunt now again depends on the analysis what we do in the third point. And what is it? Does this belong to, does both the you know, terminals of this element belong to the input side? And this is the input side right here. And RE, both the terminals do belong to the input side. And this is a big S. And what is the mixing happening then? What kind of mixing will happen? Exactly, it's a voltage mixing. If voltage mixing happens, what is the word that we use? We call it as series. So this is basically a current series amplifier. Got the point? So it is that simple. Fine. We'll take up one more example. We'll take up one more example. And probably you would have come across the circuit when we were when you were discussing on uh, the different biasing circuits. What are the different biasing circuits you have come across? It's a fixed bias. It's a voltage divider bias. Any other biasing circuit? It's a emitter bias circuit. And we have one more kind of circuit which is called as a connected to base bias circuit. So the circuit what I'm writing now is using what kind of biasing? It's a connected to base bias circuit. Let me call this as R dash. This is RC. And we have got here as plus VCC. This is again a 
uh, a common emitter configuration and it's a NPN transistor. Let's say emitter resistance is not there. We're not interested in that as of now. And there is a voltage source with the input PS plus minus. Now the question comes as to who is providing the feedback. It's very easy to now identify who is providing the feedback. And let's indicate the output also. Very important. Okay, we are taking the output at the collector. Input is being fed at the base. Now, what kind of, what is the feedback element? Let's try to identify the feedback element. What is the feedback element in this? Please write it down. Have you got the answer to it? Yes, it's basically R dash, which is acting as a feedback because this fellow directly connects the output and input together. So it's very obvious that the feedback element is R dash in this case. So now comes the question whether that element is connected to the output or not. Because now I have to identify what kind of sampling are we doing, whether it is a current sampling or a voltage sampling. So if the terminal, if that emitter, you know, uh, the feed, feedback element terminal is connected to the output, then we say it is voltage sampling. So what is the answer to it? Yes, because you can readily see R dash being connected to the output. So the answer is a big yes and we say what kind of sampling are we doing? It is voltage sampling. Sampling is basically voltage sampling. What is the third thing? I should check whether both the terminals of this feedback element is seen at the input or not. And which is the input circuit is right here. And what you observe is only one of the element, one of the one of the terminal of the feedback element. So I should say a no. Not both these terminals of the feedback element is seen at the input side. So I would say the mixing will be what? It will not be voltage but instead it is current. And if it is current, what do we use? We use the word shed. So what kind of amplifier is it? It's basically a voltage shed amplifier. So that easy is to identify the feedback. The only thing is you just have to follow this rule. That's all. So lastly, we've got the last uh, you know topology uh, where we have to again identify what kind of uh, feedback is basically this. Now in this case, what you observe is let's try to write that first one feedback element. feedback element. Anything, any change that happens at the collector will directly be affected at the emitter side. Correct? Agree to it? And that's very obvious answer. And at the emitter, what do you observe? You observe a unbypassed emitter resistance and also a resistance RF connected between the emitter as well as the base terminal. Correct? So, there are two elements which will now provide the feedback. This is something like, you know, voltage divider network. Correct? So there are two things which are providing the feedback. I use the word voltage divider. Now does that really matter? Should I say that it's kind of either a voltage series or a voltage and we already have seen that. But we should stick on to the rule. We should stick on to the rule. The thumb rule says you say that the sampling is voltage only when you see the terminal, one of the terminal of the feedback element being connected to the output. But where is the output? It is at the second collector. Correct. But where is the feedback element connected? It is at the second emitter. Correct. So the answer is no. The feedback element terminal is not seen at the output. It is not connected to the output directly. So I would say the sampling that is happening is what? It is basically the current sampling. So this has to be a current amplifier or what kind of current, whether it is a current series or current shunt, we will see that. Okay. Then, is both the element, the terminal of the feedback element present at the input side? Again, a big no to it. Because what you observe is, this is the input. What you observe is one terminal seen at the input, the other terminal is somewhere at the other side, which is not seen at the input side. So, the mixing is happening again in terms of the current. 
and what is the other name given to it? It's basically the shunt. So this is current shunt amplifier. Okay, this is how it is identified. Now probably you must be in a you know uh, fix that you know why this condition of no yes has to be done. If you can go back and check the very beginning you know discussions that we had in the topologies, these things are really going to become very simple to you. What happens? When I want to sample a voltage, you are connecting both the terminals of the feedback element to what? To the output. Correct? When you are trying to sample the current, you are taking the sampling or you were only tapping it. You are connecting it in series. Correct? So only one of the terminal was kind of seen there. So that's how basically it makes difference or we are able to identify what kind of topology it is, whether it is a current series, current shunt, voltage series, or voltage shunt. So if you stick on to the basic rule, that we have discussed here, I think given any circuit to you, you will be in a position to identify the kind of feedback topology and you can also apply the necessary equations in finding out the different parameters for it. Okay. So with this, we'll come to the we have come to the end of this uh, feedback amplifiers module. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. We'll meet you again. Thank you.